Hello and welcome to another Hot Rods to Review. In this video, I'm going to be continuing my blind review of the manga series My Hero Academia Vigilantes. The arc I'm reviewing is known as the Versus Queen Bee arc and it was 17 chapters long. It started on chapter 12 and ended on chapter 28. This arc has definitely convinced me that this series deserves an anime adaptation because there is just so much material here that deserve to be animated. Just like that red subscribe button deserves to be clicked so you can add my reviews to your subscription feed. Now without further ado, let's get into the video. This arc was amazing all around and it was definitely my favorite of the three I've read so far. I got introduced to a bunch of new characters, one of those characters being Makoto who quite reversed to a senpai. She was an easily likable character as she just had a really fun personality. I also thought that her quirk was very unique and perfect for the type of investigative reporting that she does. She expanded on the concept of vigilantism by explaining how some vigilantes became heroes and gave further insight as to how the current system came to be. I like diving into lore like this because it adds to the world building in a really Really fun and relevant way. It was especially humorous when Koichi and Makoto Senpai went out and polled the popularity of the Narahata vigilantes, and they found that many people viewed the crawler as a pervert since he was always so low on the ground. It was good comedy, but it also symbolized the fact that people look down and disrespect him because his quirk literally requires for him to be on the ground. Another character who got introduced in this arc was the obnoxious Captain Celebrity. I got a headache every time this character appeared on the page. He is everything that a hero shouldn't be because at the end of the day, he only cares about making himself look good. He is exactly the kind of guy that Stain will take issue with, and I wonder if Stain will eventually come back and kill him. If you read the original My Hero Academia manga, then you know that Captain Celebrity isn't America's top hero. I don't want to say who is because I don't want to spoil the main series, but the point I'm making here is that Captain Celebrity isn't mentioned despite him being America's top hero in this series. This leads me to believe that he will die sometime before the main series starts. The real question is, how will he die? Will he be a victim of the hero killer Stain? Or will he have a redemption arc in which he sacrifices his life to save others? I honestly don't know. But one thing I do know for sure is that his death is inevitable. Koichi's mother, Shoko, was another interesting character who was introduced in this arc. She definitely added some comic relief with her obsession over Koichi's love life and safety. Her main contribution to this story involved Koichi's awakening. I liked the reveal that Koichi always had another portion of his powers that he was locked away due to his own mother tying him down. I feel like I should hate the mother more for this, but I understand her desire to keep her son safe. At least she learned that she can't keep her son restrained forever. She's going to have to let him make his own mistakes and learn from them so it was a bit of character development for her as well. But that double jump that Koichi did was definitely epic. It was honestly something that I didn't see coming. I knew it was possible for Quirks to awaken since I've seen Himiko Toga's Quirk evolve in season five of the main series. This double jump ability isn't something he can replicate yet, but I believe it is definitely something that he will obtain mastery over as he continues to grow as a vigilante. I like how this was foreshadowed in the first arc when he said, I just wanna fly when he jumped to save Popstep. While he technically didn't fly, he did do something close to it with his double jump, and I believe that he may even be able to fly in the future. That would also change the public's perception of him as a creepy pervert who crawls on the ground. They would have to stop looking down on him and finally look up to him. Okay, it's main event time. This arc is called the Versus Queen B arc, and I haven't even really talked about the B user yet. That is because that is the last thing I wanted to talk about. So with that being said, let's talk about the concert real quick and then hop into the Queen Bee discussion. The concert portion of this arc was honestly kind of boring. I get that it was a huge thing for Pop Step, but concerts and music just don't translate well in this type of medium. I am definitely confident that if this series got an anime adaptation, I would be more excited by this concert. The Class 1A concert was great in the anime, but it felt a little boring like this one in the manga. You just need to hear the music and see the show to get the vibes, and unfortunately the manga can't do that. However, during that concert, something very interesting did happen. There was a battle between Knuckle Duster and the Bee user. Not only was this battle amazing, but it gave me more insight as to who Knuckle Duster was as a character. Learning that he had a wife in the hospital who was probably dead now was just heartbreaking. I feel like I'm seeing this man from a whole different perspective, especially since I now know that his daughter was being possessed by a bee user. That probably pushed him into becoming a vigilante in the first place who was hell bent on finding users of Trigger. This also provided some context as to why he was so obsessed about seeing a bee in that area that one time. 
but this fight demonstrated just how ruthless Knuckle Duster could be in a fight. We technically saw some of that in his fight with Stendhal, but this was a whole new level as it was his own daughter's body. I mean, he literally stopped her heart and then restarted it when he needed to. In the last review, I said that if this series can keep delivering on brutal action like the Stendhal fight, then it would definitely keep me invested. Well, this series has definitely delivered with this arc. It did such a good job that I am already convinced that this needs to be animated. Overall, I definitely enjoyed this arc. It was the longest so far, but it was also the best one I have read to date. The ending of this arc had some heavy implications. Specifically, it seems as if Knuckle Duster is going to retire from vigilantism. Him getting rid of his weapons and his mask is very reminiscent to the way Spider-Man got rid of his costume in the movie Spider-Man 2. His priorities have clearly shifted. When he was first introduced, he told Koichi, I am here, signifying that he will be there to protect the weak from danger. Now he is saying, I am here to his daughter in the hospital, which implies that he is going to step up as a father and maybe even leave vigilantism behind. I liked his farewell to his teammates. He didn't say that he was leaving for good, but he did say, do you mind cleaning up here? To me, that means that he is leaving Naruhata in the capable hands of these younger vigilantes. The narration at the end made it seem as if there will be a time skip for the next arc. It is clear that Knuckle Duster hasn't been around for a while, so the Crawler and Pop Step are on their own now. Maybe in the next arc, I'll see a more experienced Crawler as he is probably still keeping at that vigilante work. I guess the only way to find out is to keep on reading. If you like this video, consider watching another one. I talk about a variety of different topics on this channel, mostly My Hero Academia right now, so I hope to see you there. This has been the Hot Rodster. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.